The Dauntless. All right, this is a little ahead of schedule, children, but it looks like my daughter is a little too eager for her own fight, Kylon announces. Now, I've been requested, paid in fact, to teach a few pointers to you young soldiers, but now we're going to see what an Axiom warrior does against an Axiom adept. My daughter Maylan is a fully trained empty hand master, and her opponent is registered as an adept of the undaunted. Perhaps if you knew more about me, you could make a better announcement. Modan notes as he steps onto the arena floor. His vision is blurring around the edges. There's so much information that he's suddenly being made aware of that his mind simply cannot process it so it all gets blurred together. And what have you done? Malon asks as the edges of his vision start focusing and the world opens up. Hmm, a fair question that, isn't it? Modan asks, even as he reaches into a pocket and pulls out a small pouch. Perhaps a better question is, what can I do? If you think you're going to scare me, you have to try harder than the mysterious Axiom Adept routine. Melan notes as Modan pulls out a small stack of blue metal coins. Try tight credit discs? Yes. Nearly impervious to all Axiom effects, nigh undetectable to Axiom senses, effectively unstoppable by Axiom barriers and essentially unaffected by Axiom forces. Sure, a wall of conjured fire will heat them up and a blast of kinetic energy will send them scattering. But you can't do anything to them directly without using so much power that you're dancing at the edge of null creation. Yes, tritite is a wonderfully useful metal, but it's the bane of... Melan begins and Modan flicks a coin upwards. How will it land? He asks. On the ground, she states, and the coin bounces off the arena floor with no lost momentum and arcs gently towards her. She catches it and checks the coin. It's normal. The coin cannot be directly influenced by Axiom, so I do not influence it directly. He says before tossing all the coins up in his hand and they flip a single time in the air and land in a perfect stack. Do you start to understand? Indirect control of Tritite, a nearly invisible and unstoppable weapon. If it can be controlled, she says after a moment and she flicks the coin at him. It lands on the stack of coins in his hand, on its edge. What are you controlling? The odds. You see, this little song and dance was for more than just to show off. I needed a few moments to get ready, he says with a grin, and her eyes widen before suddenly streaking forwards. Too late, he replies and she passes right through him as the tri-tight coins fall clean through his hands as well, slowly turning in the air before they strike the arena floor. Then all hell breaks out as each one simultaneously decides that objects in motion accelerate past the sound barrier. The bangs of the sound barrier shattering are strangely dampened as the sound waves of the half dozen coins moving faster than the eye can track somehow collide into each other and cancel out just enough to drop the sound down to a level more akin to a half dozen party poppers going off than a supersonic acceleration in atmosphere. The whipping winds and the sound of ringing coins bouncing off the stands between the trainees is the only sign they get that they were ever even near the tri-tight pieces. Even as Maylan dodges frantically, getting her ankles and fingers battered by the insane web of coins reduced to streaks in the air that hit like bullets which refuse to break and bounce again and again. She's long had any idea of quitting trained out of her. She takes a swing at him and a coin intercepts her foot and only gains momentum after it parries her and rockets away and forces her to dodge. As it's now moving at such a speed, it starts to let out a whistle. The other coins start to accelerate as well. The odds of any part of this are so infinitesimally small that without my intervention, it would likely take a billion years for such a thing to happen in this galaxy. But that's the joy about a probability waveform. That's the first thing you learn. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is beyond understanding. 
Sometimes it's impossible for you. Sometimes it's beyond your understanding. But to be undaunted is to find the way regardless. How did you oof? Melon tries to ask, but a pair of coins rocket up from the floor and sock her in the ribs. My mind is not powerful enough alone, but my mind a thousand thousand times over, working as one obsessively, working to increase my perception, my capacity to calculate, my coordination. It is enough, just enough to begin, Modan explains with a smile. He can see the numbers line up behind her eyes and she twists before dodging back to avoid a triple smack to her left knee and claps her hands together while sending a disrupting wave through the axiom. Ha! she retorts, and he holds up his left hand in a finger gun with his index and middle finger raised. Bang! He says just as a pair of coins rocket into each other from opposite angles and slam forwards and forces her to dodge desperately. The wind resistance alone causes the coins to veer away from the enraptured trainees and bounce off the stands. Bang, he says, and jerks back his arm as if shooting, and this time three coins slam into each other and catapult towards Melon. She needs a lot more distance in order to avoid the shimmering blue coins. He turns the gun to the side of his own head and drops the thumb. Bang! The coins slam into the side of his head at just such an angle as to cause him no harm whatsoever, and then directly into the shocked Mai Lan's collarbone, and she's sent staggering back with a yelp of pain. Then as quickly as the supersonic coin cacophony began, it ends as he claps his hands together and then pulls them apart to reveal that each tri-tight coin is between his fingers with the one in galactic standard numerals pointed outwards to show the value of each coin. So, what do you think? Am I adept enough for you? He asks her as she stares at him and rubs where the last pummeling blow to her upper chest slammed into her. You... You just toyed with the odds? You can get a great deal done with dumb wild luck. Smart tame luck is a wholly different beast, he says before suddenly shaking his head. The odds of his mental boosts reforming perfectly are effectively zero, but not zero zero. They reform and the blurring edges of his vision sharpen into understanding once again. The odds said not in a million years, he said right this moment. He won the argument. So, now that you've seen what I can do with the price of a small bottle of water, Modan says, before reaching into his coin pouch after shifting all the coins to balance in a stack on his right middle finger. How about the price of a decent-sized meal? Um, uh, oh. Melon notes as he pulls out another 18 pieces. He drops the coinage and the legal tender becomes a lethal cage of blindingly fast blue streaks that sing through the air and chime with every bounce. As musical as it is, potentially murderous. My eventual hope is to reach one million credits, he says, holding up his pinky finger to his mouth. The few members of the nerd squad recording the spar erupt into gales of laughter at the reference. He then points directly at them. There's your quote. May you choke on it. Quote? Melon asks. I just quoted the villain of a trilogy of parody movies. It was stupid, crass, childish, crude, and admittedly funny. Modan says, disappointed in himself. Even if you're not a cretin, you have to give way to the cretinous demands every now and then. Right. Well, I'm going to take you seriously now so I advise you to take out all the coins you can manage. Oh? Why's that? He asks, and she blurs past him in such a way that the wake of her passing slams into him like a pane of glass, and he staggers to the side. She hadn't made any hostile move towards Hum, but her movement was controlled enough to send him staggering. Then she flits away as the coins start converging on her. Every time she takes a moment to try and consider things, the streaks of ringing, singing blue are on her in a heartbeat. Then things get infinitely worse as she can feel the axiom construct around Modan grow. Physically, all he does is take a deep, calming breath and close his eyes. The coins are ahead of her now, shifting to slam into her elbows and knees like railgun rounds. 
If she hadn't reinforced herself to an acceptable level, then her limbs would have already been outright severed by the relentless barrages of the edges of the coins. They're not sharp in the slightest, but this is just proof positive that with enough force a club can cut. A coin slams into her head far faster than the rest. This one was no longer making noise as it traveled through the air. Try tight for your thoughts? Modan taunts before wincing and opening his eyes with a rueful expression. I'm sorry, that just slipped out. Is this a game for you? She demands as she tries a triple teleportation to fake him out, but the moment she tries to drop an axe kick onto his head, a quintet of coins slam into her heel from different directions and knock her back. She quickly controls her momentum and turns the ragdoll throw into an elegant flip. But her fingers are each pegged with a coin in the quarter second, they're on the ground and her every twist to try and dodge the bouncing metal just leads her into twice as many coins from another direction. Now, this is a powerful combat technique that by itself can clear a room with trivial ease. It's also something in a legal gray area. I'm technically not controlling these coins despite telling each one exactly where they're going. Meaning that, on a technical scale, I have yet to actually fight you. All I've done is altered probability, meaning all I've used Axiom on is myself. It's legally considered harmless outside of a gambling establishment. By law, the spar hasn't started yet. What? She demands and she thinks the coins easing off their assault and simply bouncing around in rapidly shifting geometric patterns, singing and clinking and chiming in an unending song of metal assault. Metal assault that is technically nothing more than a transportation technique outside a gambling establishment. Metal assault that is legally the same as him picking up each individual coin and walking it around the room. If you're getting really technical every time the coins hit her, it's an attempted theft on her end. You are absurd, my dear woman. I was born and raised in an environment that had many major natural laws of the galaxy simply absent. A true absurdity would be a lack of absurdities, he remarks as he takes a few steps forward. Now, are you ready to continue? Continue? Have we even started yet? Malon asks before she can stop herself. Well, yes, but technically, no. Modan remarks and there's a cheer from the, the nerds. That was not the quote and you know it. What quote? Malon asks in a baffled tone. Never mind. Shall we continue? He asks and she nods before she accelerates her personal awareness of time and with the help of Axiom slips into it fully. The streaks of blue light settle into slowly moving coins. Each one is giving out a slight whistling sound as the ridges on the edge cause the air to roil over the sides and sing. Moving at these speeds is incredibly difficult if you're not willing to fade out from reality a touch. The problem with that is that it's the complete opposite of the unbending resilience needed to shrug off the assault of the coins. It's far too easy to get stuck in a mental rut of such things and to make matters worse. The phasing technique she's most familiar with relies on covering her with a field to set her out of phase. Something the tritite of the coins will merrily ignore as they crash into her unprotected body. So she favors resilience, but that means she's pressing against nigh unyielding walls of air. Walking into a strong wind is absurd, but doing so at speeds that treats air more like a solid is all the harder, but she's strong enough. Even as the unending, invisible barrier of atmosphere pushes against her with nearly as much force as any of the coin blows, she pushes hard and her fist goes right into his chest, then through, no impediment. He's there, but, but he's only touching the odds. How had he done that? How had all matter is made of space and energy in different patterns? Had he... Had he decided that her pattern and his would pass through each other without touching, his empty space moving through hers, the odds, not impossible, but not anything that ever happened before and time itself would die before it would naturally happen again. 
She turns to stare incredulously at what he just pulled off and her eyes widen at the sight of an entire wall of tri-tight coins slowly crashing down on her. Twenty of them are about to hammer into her entire body. She tries to slide away and her ankle slams into another coin. She's no amateur though and it's far from enough too. She feels the next coin under her shoe as she puts it down. Stupid luck, she says as she tries to save it into a proper fall back and in the small of her back is the 23rd coin. Even as the 24th blocks the rising of her arm as she tries to use the momentum to spin out. She turns the other way then and wiggles away from the arm coin, but the one that initially tried to trip her has already shifted just enough that it's in the way again. Time's up and the first of the 20 coins slam into her. She teleports away and as reality wrenches back into place, she feels something poking her in the upper back. She turns and tries to swat things away. It's Mo Dan. He's not moving as quickly as she is, but he's on a similar level and moving in flawless synchronicity with the coins, her and the universe. She punches out and his arm bends in such a way as to catch her arm and deflect the blow. Her danger sense calls out and she slips to the side and his foot hooks around her ankle in a neat as you please trip, the kind that a child would do to a friend backing up unwisely near them. As she falls, she brings her hands down to control things and the first thing that her fingers make contact with are tri-tight coins that slip under her fingers even as she moves. There is a hammer blow in her low back as she's upside down having no leverage and soon to come under bombardment from the coins. The force of the blow is enough to send her through the air, and even as she twists, she can see the relentless coins zooming in on her. Then they crash together, and they all ricochet away at impossible angles, giving her all the room she needs to catch herself and land safely, outside the ring. 